Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we are going to paint spring magnolias. I'm trying really hard to bring some spring into my part of the world and hopefully it helps bring in a little bit of spring for you as well. Before we begin, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so that you can paint with me every week and then check out the video description below for a full list of materials that I used for today's painting. Now let's get started. Today I'm going to go back to my Frederick's Red Label stretched canvas. This is a 12 by 16 and it is fresh out of the package. I have not prepared this canvas in any way whatsoever. So today I really don't have a very clear idea of what I want my painting to look like at the end. I know the basic elements I want. I know kind of what I want my background to look like because I took it from another painting I was working on. The background was the best part of it. So I know what I want my background to look like. And I'm pretty sure that I want some magnolia flowers, but how I want them to look, I don't know really. So I've downloaded some images. I have this one, this one, and this one. And these are all images that I got off of Pixabay. So between the three images of magnolia, I think I'll be able to come up with kind of a composition and a look that I really want. So to do my background, I'm going to use my number 12 cloud brush and it is dry. I'm going to be scrubbing with it dry and I'm using a different palette today because I actually ran out of paper plates. I know, crazy, right? So hopefully this will work out. It's a little heavier than a paper plate, which is why I don't typically use it in videos. But I'm going to be using some phthalo blue and phthalo green with some white and I'm going to create just a really vibrant kind of aqua blue sky. Before I zoom you in there to get started, what I want you to do is kind of look at your canvas and decide how you want the background composed. You don't have to do it exactly like I've done it. I kind of want a little bit of a, kind of like a sweeping X type look, I think, in my finished image. That's what I keep kind of being drawn toward when I think of a composition that I want for this. So what I mean is I'm gonna have my blue of my sky and then I'm gonna have some pink in the background so the whole thing is going to be like a bokeh type effect with the background just blurred out. So maybe the pink is magnolia trees in the distance. So I'm kind of picturing my pink sweeping from here, maybe kind of like that and up. And so my blue is kind of like that. And then I'm picturing, I don't know if this is going to happen, but I'm picturing my magnolia branch kind of coming up like this so that the flowers that are our subject are kind of in the blue section, but we'll see how that goes. So now that I've got an idea of how I want my background composed, now I can get started on my blue because I know about where I want it to be. So I'm gonna pull just a little bit of blue and green out. Remember the phthalos are very, very strong, so you don't need a ton. I don't want it to be on the green side I just want that green to change the blue a little bit. So let's see how that looks. Maybe just a hint more green than that. There we go, let's start with that. And see how the paint on my brush, there's no glob of paint. It's just like a little bit of a smear. So I'm just gonna pick a place, do about half foot pressure and start scrubbing. Now when I say I'm scrubbing, I'm not, you know, like grinding the brush really hard into the canvas. It's just like a scrubbing motion. I am holding it fairly, lo fairly loosely with my hand. I'm going to take it in a bunch of different directions. You can kind of spin it like that to get down into the texture if you need to. Get just some white. Because if this is a sky in the distance, there might be some clouds in it. I'm not going to be doing clouds specifically, but just some lighter colors here and there to help kind of indicate clouds. If you don't have my cloud brushes and you don't have a brush that you're comfortable scrubbing with, because keep in mind scrubbing with a brush not made for scrubbing, it can ruin it. So if it's not a brush you want to dedicate to scrubbing, don't do this with it. So if you don't have my cloud brushes and you don't have a scrubbing brush, then you can do this very similar to how we did the background in the Lotus video that we just did recently. A lot of people thought that I did this 
with my cloud brush in that Lotus video. So you'll get a very similar type of effect. I think it'll be a little bit more work, just take a little bit longer, but, but you'll get a, a similar effect. So see just a very slight gradient in the color there. I can come back afterwards, you know, if when I'm done, I think, oh, it's all pretty much the same color or, you know, whatever, I can come back after and make adjustments to the color. So right now I'm really just worried about covering all of that canvas, all of the white spots. And enjoying watching the way the colors kind of smear together. It's my favorite part of this technique is, you know, just picking up a bit of a different color and watching how it just kind of smokes into that previous section. I find that to be very, very relaxing. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I paint just to watch what the paint does, <laughs> not even for a, you know, for a finished painting. And that's okay. I don't mind that. Just picked up some white. Remember that if you're doing this and you're having a hard time getting colors to kind of blend or smooth together, you're probably using too much paint. You see how much paint I'm picking up? It's really not a ton. If you pick up a lot of paint and you have like a glob and there's texture, you're gonna have a super hard time getting that paint to spread around. Likewise, if you're having a lot of texture like that, with a lot of the white showing, then maybe you're not picking up enough paint. So just pick up a little bit more. It might take a little bit of practice, but eventually you'll figure out what's enough, what's too much, what's just right. And occasionally the color I pick up is a little bit more green or a little bit more blue. I like having the, the variation in color. As I start getting toward where I know I want pink, I'm going to go a little bit lighter with the blue. It's still blue, it's not white. But I'm really just picking up white so I can get a paler color. And that's just because it'll make it a little bit easier to transition into the pink next. Another thing I'm doing is taking my blue down a little farther than I know I want it. So I think I want my pink to end right about here. So I'm gonna take my blue lower than that because if I stop the blue right where I know I want the pink to be, then I'm gonna have like a hard line. It's gonna look a little awkward. It's gonna be hard to cover and transition to. So my pink can overlap the blue a little bit. That's perfectly fine. So don't be afraid. Get that blue down farther than you think you want it. See, I'm kind of nudging up into it. This color is fairly dry, see that? But because of the way I'm nudging into it, it's gonna look like it's blending. So if you follow me on Instagram, 
You may have seen recently I've been posting some painting vlogs. So in those I am painting, but I'm not, I'm not really giving any instruction. It's really just kind of a backdrop to my chatter. <laughs> so I'm talking to you and just kind of telling you, you know, things that are on my mind as it relates to art and, and life and all kinds of stuff. So if you haven't checked that out yet, check that out. It's kind of, it was a challenge for myself really to do that. It makes me feel really vulnerable and it really put me outside of my comfort zone to do those vlogs because the painting that I'm doing, it's just painting for myself, you know, I'm going to it exactly like I do when I'm painting for myself, which is having no idea and or very little idea. I did start with a reference image this time, which sometimes I do, but the only planning I really did for it before I started filming was picking out my colors. So that's a little exposing to let you watch that process because it could very well turn out really horrible. I could abandon it in the middle and you know that's quite different from what you see on my channel here. <laughs> so it was a little scary to put that out there but it's I've, I've found in the past, which is why I decided to go ahead and do this, that pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone is really a very freeing thing to do. It can make you feel so empowered. It really can. You know, to say, I'm not comfortable with this, but I'm going to do it anyway. So this is getting there. I'm going to bring this down a little lower. Then I think I'm going to touch up the color. There's definitely areas I want lighter, you know, to really kind of pop the notion that there's some clouds back there. Just some billowy, you know, spring, spring day clouds. I could really use some spring right now. Today is March, oh, what is today? Eighth? I have no idea what today is. And it's snowing again here. <laughs> I think as many of you in the U.S. anyway, I don't know about the rest of the world, but I know so many of you are still getting hammered with snow. And this is quite out of the ordinary for us here. So the magnolia trees should be blooming not too much longer, but I don't know if the weather keeps up the way this is. Maybe they'll be blooming later this year than normal. I'm just still working on breaking this up and bringing it down a little lower. See how fuzzy that is? I just want to make sure there's no hard line. If there's a hard line, I'm going to have a really hard time covering that later. Okay, to start kind of punching some of these clouds, I'm actually going to go to my number six cloud brush just so I can work a little bit more detail a little more incrementally rather than you know these large scrubbing motions and again it is dry a little bit more white and just kind of decide where i want it kind of plop that down I'm using the same scrubbing motion but notice how gently i'm holding my brush that should give you an indication of how hard the pressure is because if i'm holding my brush like this I can't, you know, grind the brush into the canvas really super hard. So those of you who struggle with pressure, you know, with putting too much pressure on your brush, I want you to practice holding your brush really loosely like this because it forces you to use lighter pressure. If I want really hard pressure, I'm going to hold my brush like this, right? But if I want very soft pressure, I'm going to choke back. And see, it's really just balanced there. And my thumb is kind of holding it, preventing it from falling. Plop down my color, break it up. It's okay if you can see the texture of the canvas in there. Don't worry about that.
There I am digging just a little bit harder to kind of smear that paint around. There we go. If you feel like the white that you're putting on is too aggressive because maybe the blue in the background has completely dried, then just come in here, get the teensiest, tinesiest bit, not a lot of this blue color. It's really just a smear. I mean, look, it's next to not coming off on my hand at all. And then pick up your white. And that will just kind of help bring it down a little bit and it'll help you blend in if your color's already dry. Just that tiny smear of blue on there. Kind of get lost in this process. Don't sweat what it looks like. You know, don't go at it with the intention of making clouds. Just enjoy the way the paint spreads, the way it kind of fogs out, the sound of the brush on the canvas. It's a very ASMR <laughs> type experience there, I think. That little scratchy noise. See, I have a little texture there that I don't really want next to none of that blue paint, but look at that, gone. Oh, that was way too much. start to feel like it's looking a little polka dotty, like you've got spot, 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 then just start connecting some of them. I feel like in a few places I'm getting that. So see, I just took some white and I put it there and I'm connecting two areas that I felt like were kind of spotty. I actually hadn't planned on spending this much time on my background. But I just love this process so much that I kind of easily get sucked into it. I think I am about done with it though. I'm just gonna kind of connect these two spots here, brighten up this top corner, and then I am gonna move on from this color. can't overdo this. If you end up feeling like you, you took away too much blue, you have too much white, just put some of the blue back in. It's easy. You can go back and forth as much as you like.
a little bit of my blue mixture. There we go. So there's my background. I'm ready to start on the pink. And I'm gonna go back to my number 12 cloud brush. Now, if you do have my cloud brushes, but you only have one, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you dry this off as well as possible. Let's kind of twirl it in a paper towel. Another thing I like to do is kind of flick it on the side of my hand, not right in front of your canvas, but <laughs> just a bit. And you can tell how much moisture is coming out of the brush that way. However, I have a dry one, so I'm gonna to go to my dry one. If your brush is too wet, then your paint is gonna smear more than it's gonna have fog like this. And I find that it's just a little difficult to work with. So I like to scrub with my brush perfectly dry. You may like to scrub with the brush a slightly bit wet. So try it out and see if that's what you prefer. So for my pink background, I'm gonna use alizarin crimson and quinacridone. And you really can use any kinds of reds or pinks that you like. I like these two together for this because the alizarin gives a little bit of depth while the quinacridone keeps everything nice and vibrant. So just like with the blue and green, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of both. Doesn't matter if it leans more toward one or the other. And a bit of white. And I'm gonna work in variations of the color. Darker, lighter, more alizarin, more quinacridone. Same exact technique here. One of the things that I've already gotten out of, you know, doing my, my vlogs on Instagram that I told you about is, you know, I've, I've noticed in the past also that when I don't put pressure on myself to perform, you know, when I'm just like, ah, we'll just paint and see what happens and it doesn't matter if it looks terrible or not, that I typically am much, much happier with the way a painting comes out. And I mean, not always, certainly, there's lots of times where I'm like, oh, that was junk. But pressure on yourself, it makes, it makes everything harder, you know? So when I paint for myself, I don't have pressure on myself because I, I genuinely, like I said in one of the vlogs, I genuinely don't care what a painting comes out like when I'm just painting for myself because my whole purpose in painting for myself is just to enjoy the process and spend some time, you know, doing something that I enjoy. That's it. It's not for an end product. But a lot of times when I paint for you guys, you know, I have that pressure on myself because I do care what the painting turns out like. So I, I, I can tend to get a little bit stressed out. So I think that's why today and, you know, several times throughout this year, there have been paintings where I'm just like, I don't really know what I'm doing and I really don't care because I know that taking that pressure off of myself a lot of times leads to a product that I'm much happier with. So that's kind of what I'm doing today. Now I'm starting to get up to where the pink meets the blue. And I'm gonna use some white. I'm not looking for a perfect blend here and I'm not gonna get it anyway. So there's no sense in looking for a perfect blend. I'm gonna come up to the tippy toe, see that? And just kind of start nudging it. Get it up into that blue, right? Because magnolias, the way that they grow, they kind of come out and up. So maybe that's just like some magnolia branches in the distance that are kind of poking up into the sky a bit. Maybe you'll get a little bit of a purple if your sky isn't completely dry. And that could look nice too. But 
don't be afraid to touch that blue. Get up in there. But use that tippy toe pressure. Still just picking up white here. I haven't picked up any pink in quite a while. I'm gonna bring this spot up just a little higher. Still just white. with my little number six and kind of pop some lighter colors in here as well. Trail that up. back to my number six which is dry and back into my white I'm gonna just lighten up some areas just a little spot of white on the end I'm gonna keep it for the most part dark toward the bottom so that's where the trees are gonna be nice and thick I'm just kind of smoke out some of that white up here just kind of lose yourself in it don't think too much about it in fact I challenge you not even to think about it at all. Think about something else. Think about, you know, whatever, but make sure it's something positive. Don't think about things that stress you out or, you know, problems that you're having because I think that you attach those to your painting when you do. I know that I can, you know, if I'm thinking about problems while I'm painting, those problems get attached to that painting. And then that's what I think about when I look at that painting afterwards and I don't want to do that. So think about, you know, listen to some music that you love and think about that. Sing along to the music. Think about plans that you have for this spring or this summer. I have lots of plans for this spring and summer. And so I'm really needing that to come pretty quick. Let's stop with the snow you know, so we can get into summer and spring. And that's what I'm excited about. So that's what I'm thinking of. I'm not thinking about how my painting is coming along. I'm just taking it one brush stroke at a time. You know, there, I like that amount of paint. Let's scoot it up here. I like the way that that's scooting. Those are the kind of thoughts I'm having. It's not overall, how does this look? Oh, I'm so stressed out. How am I going to do this or that? It's just simply focusing on, you know, being mindful. It's that mindfulness again. Just being mindful of every brush stroke, not the overall painting. I like the way that is smoking out down there. I like the way that it's right up against that darker spot. Bring this up, I like that shape and the way it helps transition into the blue. So if you have to think about your painting, that's as much as I want you to think about it. Just mindfully enjoying the individual brush strokes.
I love that sometimes you can't tell where the clouds stop and where the tree starts. That's exactly what I want. In fact, I'd really like to see that right here. See how the tree just kind of starts to burst into that little bit of cloud. That is what's making me happy today. So even if the rest of this painting doesn't turn out, I love what's happening here. And if the rest of my painting doesn't turn out, well, I'll just turn around and do another painting with this technique, probably these colors, because these colors are really making me happy right now. Sometimes I think it's perfectly okay, not sometimes, I think it's always perfectly okay to do little things in painting that is, serves no purpose except, you know, making you happy and being meditative. So, you know, if there's two colors that, that just make you so happy and you really like this technique or, you know, some other technique, then just take those two colors and that technique and just do nothing but make yourself happy. I think that that's a lot of time where abstract art comes from, you know? It can be so meditative. I had really not planned on spending this much time on this background. So I really should probably wrap it up. Just, you know, just for time's sake. Maybe, we'll see. No, I should wrap it up. Okay. Just break up a couple of those lines. I almost feel like everything just kind of stops right there. So I'm just breaking that up. Much better. All right. All right, so there's the background. I'm gonna let it dry completely because I'm gonna be using a chalk pencil on it and I don't wanna run the risk of having the chalk pencil either scratch the paint or stick to it so I can't wash it off. So I'm gonna let this dry for quite a while and then we'll be back. Okay, it's been a little while, but after standing back and looking at it for a bit, I am really loving this area here, except I really just wanna push the brightness of it, so push the highlights. So I'm just gonna go back through with my number six and pop just a little bit more white in here in a few places. And it's been a couple of hours actually since I was recording last and my paint is still wet. I actually picked up some palette wetting spray and I haven't had much of an opportunity to use it because I don't typically let my paint sit for very long and if I do then there's not usually a whole ton of paint on my palette left but I did pick some up and I sprayed a little on there and it seems to work pretty good And I do have a link in the video description below to the palette wetting spray that I used. So if you're interested in trying it out, the one thing, it's the, the Liquitex palette wetting spray. The one thing I've noticed, and I've, I heard that it was an issue, is that you have to keep the nozzle cleared out. Otherwise it, it you know, clogs up and then it doesn't spray properly later. So I was really aware of that. I felt like, and I always would clear out the nozzle, just wipe it off after using it each time, but mine started to be clogged up too. So 
I'm gonna have a little piece of a wet paper towel in the cap there to see if I can, you know, keep that from happening too much more. So aside from that, it seems to work pretty dang good. I think I'm about done here and then we can move on to the next bit, which is drying our flowers on. Some of these areas that I want nice and bright. I'm just picking up a little point of white and kind of dabbing it. Not so much scrubbing it, it's just kind of dabbing it to make sure that it stays nice and bright right there. Really helps to look at things from a distance. So I keep turning and looking at my little viewfinder on my camera because it helps me see places that I want to add highlights. So I'm actually painting right now, looking at my camera right over there, not looking at my canvas. If you have the ability to set something up so that you don't have to look directly at your canvas when you paint, I know that sounds really strange, but it can be really helpful. So whether it's just like, you know, you set up a mirror over here that will kind of reflect your canvas and you can turn your head and look at the mirror to the side of you. Sometimes that helps you see where you want to add things. Like I can see just by looking at my camera here that I'm going to put just a little bit of a pop right there. But just looking straight at it in front of it, I might never, I might never see that spot. There we go. All right, I'm gonna let the white be done. I'm gonna call that good because I gotta move on at some point. Okay, so now it's time to start deciding how I want to lay everything out. And I'm gonna use my white chalk pencil because it's very possible that to get a color dark enough on here that you would absolutely be able to see it, that it will damage my canvas and I won't be able to get it off. So I'm gonna use white and hope that you can see it. You'll see what I'm doing as we go along though. While I draw it though, I'll put the image up over here just long enough so you can see kind of how I'm drawing it out. Now, I think I've decided the shape of my branch. So I have this image. I kind of like the way this one branch is shaped here. That's kind of the swoop that I'm picturing a little bit. So I'm gonna kind of start over here and I'm just being really loose with the way I sketch it. Hopefully you can see that, but if not, you can see it in my image there. And so I like this as some leaves up there. We'll put some leaves on here. And then we've got a little bit of a bud right here, just kind of straight out. Maybe there's a little leaf there as well. Let's do another one over here. Just kind of the little, the little green part where it sticks to the branch. Obviously, I know nothing about plants, as you can tell. Oh, I kind of like that. See, I just accidentally made a scribble there. And we'll say that that's a, a petal that's starting to open. I actually am just going to end up kind of imitating this whole image here. So this image that I'm using, I'm going to link below to where you can download it. And I'm really just using this part in the middle here, just this twig and then these three buds here. And I'm being really loose with it. I'm not... You know, I sometimes have a hard time with flowers because 
I feel like I feel like I get hung up on all of the little details in there that you know I feel like if I can't if I can't mimic the flower exactly as I see it I'm actually gonna make this one a little bit shorter I don't like this is very angular there see this is exactly why I wanted to use white and not some other color but I feel like if I can't mimic the flower and all the little petals and everything exact that that I just don't do very well at it and I think a lot of people feel the same way because I hear a lot you know that people have a hard time with flowers and I can understand that so I'm trying to be really loose with it and just kind of letting my flowers happen however they're going to happen and they're going to look different maybe we'll have another little twig down here that's just kind of got like some leaves on it kind of like up here so don't be too you know hung up on details just get your general shape and your colors and that's really going to help the brain say that's a magnolia i understand what that is all right, now I'm gonna start by painting in where my branch is. I'm gonna use my number eight round. I have some burnt umber and Payne's gray. So I'm gonna pull a little of each out and just loosely mix them. It doesn't matter if it leans more toward Payne's gray or burnt umber, but that is about exactly the color I was looking for right there. And magnolia branches, they tend to be pretty solid, like pretty straight until they get to an elbow. So they don't have a lot of, you know, like wiggly bits in it. It's kind of straight. And then maybe it'll have, you know, like a, like a bend, a little elbow. Don't worry about detail in here right now. We're just getting the shape in. I'll probably do the shape and then come back and do the details later. I tend to do really, you know, kind of jaggedy all over the place branches. So to do branches that are a little bit more straight. That's kind of a challenge for me. It's a good challenge. I think challenges are a good thing. We'll just kind of make it meet up with the branch there, but then also smooth down into it just a little bit. Same here. see this needs to be a little bit wider I still have lots of bits of canvas that are showing in here and that's okay because I'm not done with it I'm gonna come back and you know give it some detail in a little bit let's just give it a little bit of a another little bit there I think I'm gonna stick with my number eight for now and we're gonna start working on our buds now this is kind of where I'm not looking at my reference image too much anymore really I just needed it to understand how the buds are shaped and how they're placed in relation to other elements but as far as like trying to mimic the reference image exactly, I'm not gonna make myself crazy like that. So I'm gonna get some quinacridone, a little bit of alizarin, and some white, nice bright color. And I'm just gonna come in here and start filling in this shape. I 
I got me a little matte medium to help me fill in texture and you know colors and everything you could just use water if you want I would say matte medium is not required for this painting it's just something I prefer to use Right, there's my first bud, and this one. My color's a little different. I'm gonna add you know, a layer or two to these petals. So I'm not overly concerned about what my color looks like right now or, you know, anything like that. So I'm going to get quite a bit more paint here. It's a larger flower. I'm still just kind of filling in the, the general shape. There's a magnolia tree up the street from my house and oh, I just love to see it in bloom every spring. They're such awesome trees, you know, when they're in bloom, they have barely any leaves. It's mostly just flowers. You know, they've got a couple little, just little leaves here and there, but it's just this big pink tree full of so many of these incredibly exotic looking flowers. They just make me so happy. All right, so now we can start, you know, really giving them some details. So I picked up some white. I think I'll mix a little bit more quinacridone into there so it's a nice and bright color. Keep my brush rounded to a point. And just kind of just start adding colors however I feel like I want to see them. Like I said, I'm not really looking at my image anymore. Maybe just a little bit if I'm not sure how, you know, how the petals move or something. A little quinacridone. just smooth it up in there let your brush strokes show here brush strokes are really helpful in you know creating texture and direction and I know a lot of times we don't like brush strokes but I'll come back to that one Just going back and forth between, sometimes I'm just picking up white, sometimes I pick up a mixture, sometimes I just pick up quinacridone or alizarin. Magnolias are not all bright pink. There are magnolias that are just pure white and there's magnolias that are very pale colored. I want to say I've even seen magnolias that are kind of yellow. So if you're not into the whole bright pink 
which I can't say I blame you. I'm not typically very pink, but sometimes I, sometimes I like it, especially quinacridone. But if you're not into pink, do some white ones or some yellow ones or, you know, you could even get creative and just because, uh, I don't think there's blue magnolias, but just because there aren't probably doesn't mean that you can't make some. If you want to see blue magnolias, then make blue magnolias. I get asked so much, you know, when we're doing different paintings, can I, and then, you know, whatever the question is, the answer is always yes. If you want to know if you can do something a different way, the answer is yes. I mean, there are certain things that I will tell you not to do simply because it will, you know, diminish the integrity of your paint. But can you do it? Absolutely. Yeah. You can do whatever you want to do, even if I say not to. If I tell you not to, it's just advice. You don't have to listen. So if you're wondering, can I do this with watercolor? Yes. Can I do this with an angle brush instead of a round brush? Yes. Can I do this, you know, whatever it is that you're wondering about, absolutely, you can do it. I'm just putting little bits of this quinacridone here by itself and just kind of flicking it upward. I'm letting my brush strokes and it create that little veiny texture that you see in the petals and the flower. And my paint is pretty wet, so I'm probably gonna let it dry and come back to it. But I think this is a good start. Just right there at the bottom. And even on the inside here, to say that these are different petals, I'm gonna take a bit. See how I carved it around that one? Carve it around that one. Sorry, you probably can't see that real quick. I'm gonna finish up right here and then we're gonna let this sit and dry while we work on something else. All right, I have a little cad yellow medium and I'm gonna get a little point of phthalo blue, but I don't want it that bright of green. That's just a really phony green, I think, which is why I'm not using phthalo green, but it's a good start. I'm gonna get a little bit of Payne's gray and put it in there. There we go. A nice kind of drab green. That's about exactly what I was looking for. Maybe I'll put just a tiny poke of white in there just to make it a little more opaque. And I'm gonna come in under here and just kind of start putting in that little bud piece. Smooth it into the branch. Maybe I'll brighten that up just a little bit. And I like little interesting things like in the reference image on the bottom of this one here. So we've got the little, got the little bud piece. Kind of comes in like that. And then there's like a little, just like a little bit flicking off of it. I kind of like that. 
just a little pokey yellow in there. Pop a highlight. Little bits of yellow in there. And a little more, just a little bit more phthalo blue. Still some Payne's Gray to keep it a little drab down. A little tiny bit of white. Let's get some little leaves in here. Now I don't have little stick bits where they're connected, so I'm just gonna kind of flick them. So when I come back and finish up the sticks later, I'll add the little stick bits where these are kind of stuck to the branch. But for now, I'm just gonna flick the leaves on there. Looks like I kind of made room for one right here. I like that. Throw a little more phthalo blue in my mixture, just get a deeper color. I actually left room here for a leaf. Blend it in there. Just dashing some of that darker color in. Maybe I'll even dash a little bit of that color into these. Just so they have some life. A little bit of a difference here and there. They're not all, you know, solid colored. And then I can even take just a little bit of yellow and I just think it's interesting to have different variations. I'm gonna mix some white in there. Get a really pale color. Just some nice little highlights. We are getting there. I'm becoming quite happy with what we've got going on. I'm gonna do a deeper green. Still the phthalo blue, the yellow, and a little bit of Payne's gray. Just cause the, the phthalo blue and the yellow, it makes just such a kind of a phony green, I feel like. Like, I mean, it has its place. I'm not saying it's a useless color. I'm just saying for my image, it's absolutely not the color I want to see. I just think it's too intense, too green, and not what I want. So I'm gonna put some little leaves here as well. little yellow. Maybe a little poke of white. I just like to change the color, you know, whenever I go back to it. I kind of like that. That's actually, I'm actually gonna go to my number six filbert. So it's a little bit smaller. I'm gonna get that same green color I had. Maybe I'll throw a little extra yellow in there. We're gonna do some little tiny buds just poking off of the stick. You can see that in some places on the image. So I'll zoom you in there just so you can get an idea of what it is I'm gonna do. So like on little bits like this where I made my corner, a little piece of the branch got away from me. So I'm just gonna use the edge of my filbert and just kind of touch. Make like a little nub there, a little leaf kind of starting. And you can put them wherever you like. And change up the color once in a while a little bit.
maybe that one's starting to turn into a couple of leaves. Let's finish up our branch while we're at it. And I'm still using my number six filbert. Payne's Burnt Umber White. Maybe the color I'm using now is a little darker or lighter than the color I used in the first place. And I'm really just gonna kind of use the tip of my filbert, kind of scratching it in, almost like I'm drawing, like with a pencil. So I'm just kind of coming in and, you know, let's see if you can see better on my hand. Just kind of with the tip of my brush. That's really all I'm doing. I'm sure that that makes some of you guys crazy when I paint on my hands like that. Little sticks that go up into those leaves that we made. I will zoom you in here in just a second. I'm really just kind of attaching some of these little leaves or little nubs that we put on there. Just kind of attaching them, see? Nothing real specific. Maybe just a little bit more white and just kind of scratch it in. See that? See how I'm not covering the whole thing? Just like dashing that color in. And I'm going to go back and forth between lighter colors and darker colors to do that. So just zoomed in here really tight. I've just got that lighter color. See how I'm just kind of dashing it on there? Is that blurry? Sorry, I think that was blurry. Just dash on a little bit of a light color. And then I'm gonna grab a little more Payne's Gray, maybe Burnt Umber, whatever, just darker. And I can come back and kind of scratch some of that back in. And I am gonna end with almost pure white. I'll come back with almost pure white and do this. But right now I'm just kind of building that texture. Okay, so now you know what I'm doing there. I'm gonna get my lighter color and just come in here and scratch it in. I'm not like trying to create a specific light source. So don't think of these as highlights, like where the light is hitting it. Think of this more as variations in the color of the bark because it's not a solid color. There's little variations to the color Whoops, probably not bright yellow though. I'm just guessing. Make little lines to connect some of these bits that we put off. It's just a very general connection. Scratch in some of that light color. All right, wipe some of that off. Payne's gray, maybe a little burnt umber. This is pretty pretty dark get a little matte medium if I need it or if you're using just water and I'm gonna scratch back in some of this dark color I think the more variation you put into it the nicer it's gonna look the more natural it's gonna look and be selective see I'm not like drawing a line down one edge I'm kind of just saying maybe there's a little dark spot there Maybe there's a dark spot there. Maybe this spot's too bright, so I'm gonna swipe that out. You know, I'm not, there's not a lot of real rhyme or reason. Just kind of what I feel like in the moment. That's how I like to paint. What I feel like in the moment. I washed off my brush. I'm gonna get white, maybe I'll pick it up over here. So it's not a pure clean white, 
but it's just about pure white. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna put in some selective little bits of pure, almost pure white, just wherever I wanna kind of accentuate the shape. Sometimes I pull it sideways like that, rather than, you know, making like a line down the edge. Don't get impatient and start, you know, just kind of slapping it on to get it on there. And I hope that you guys know that nine times out of 10, when I'm talking to you and I say, hey, don't get impatient here, nine times out of 10, it's because I'm starting to get impatient. <laughs> And I, t I think I typically get impatient because I think, well, this is taking too long. This is gonna be boring, they're gonna be bored. And I know, I know a, a lot of you have said to me over and over, we don't get bored, stop saying that. And I appreciate that. And I try to remember that and it does help me. But I think, you know, anybody who's dealt with a little bit of, I'm just using Payne's Gray right now. Anybody who's dealt with a little bit of kind of generalized anxiety, I think you understand that, you know, a lot of times those anxious type thoughts, they're not coming from a place of, of rationality, you know? It's, it's not something that I can just turn off and say, oh no, they like it when it takes a long time. They like, you know, when I drill into the little details, speaking of the little details, I want to Play in tight here so you can see. Aren't those nice? See how much life that gives it. And I'm just kind of dashing on just a little bit of dark. I just want it a little darker right there. Maybe just a little darker right there. This is just straight Payne's Gray at this point. So I appreciate you guys. You're very sweet, you know, to kind of try and help me relieve my fears that I'm taking too much time and I'm boring you. And it, that's something that I'm working on, you know, not, not giving in to that kind of anxiety. Love those little dark spots from that Payne's Gray. If you don't have Payne's Gray, first of all, I highly recommend you get some. It, is, it quickly became a color I cannot live without. I have to have Payne's Gray. But if you don't have Payne's Gray, you can probably use black for this. I would maybe just mix it with something a little softer. Uh, maybe some, let's see. You could use matte medium, or you can mix a Payne's Gray, which I feel like is gonna be kind of a pain for this, but you can. And my favorite way to mix Payne's Gray is Burnt Umber and Ultramarine, but I know some people make Payne's Gray with Burnt Umber, or uh, sorry, Ultramarine and uh, Burnt Sienna. So there's, there's different ways you can do it. I think I'm gonna kind of punch the highlights in the leaves a little bit too. So I cleaned off my filbert, still using it, going right into the yellow. And I'm gonna do a very similar brush stroke to what I was doing with the Payne's Gray there. I'm just using the edge of my filbert and just kind of swiping some highlights in here and there. I'm not trying to put details necessarily in the leaves, like, you know, leaf veins or any of that stuff. I'm just kind of saying this leaf blends into the background too much. So I'm gonna punch some yellow into it and now it's gonna stand out nice and bright. 
Or maybe I need to put some white in there. Some of them might need a little white. Look at that. Nice and bright, pale color. Look at that it's almost white. And I'm gonna come in here and just nudge it into a few places. And that is what I wanted. That's what I wanted to see right there. Perfect. You know those moments where you're painting something and you don't know what you're looking for. You just know this doesn't look like what I really want. And so you just experiment and all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> and you just feel so, you know, fulfilled by that. It's just so exciting when that happens. Just little tiny bits of this bright, bright color. I keep a little yellow in there sometimes. I'm not done with the flowers. We're still gonna finish those up. I'm just kind of finishing the branch right now. Cleaned off my brush again, and I'm gonna get solid white. Solid white. The exact same thing I did with the Payne's Gray, I'm doing with the white here. Just nudging it into a few places. And with the white here, Less is more, you know, you don't want to go overboard and make everything white, but to have these nice little punches of, of white is going to be really effective. So let me zip you in there nice and close and I'll show you. So see just a little pop of white there, maybe, and it can even overlap that burnt umber. A little pop of white right there. I think it's better when it does overlap it a little bit, the burnt umber, or the burnt umber, I'm sorry, the Payne's Gray, the dark, dark. See how I swiped it right over that? I can't even tell you how happy this painting is making me. You know, for not having really an idea of what I was gonna do, just a very vague idea. I knew I wanted magnolias, and I knew what I wanted the background to be like. But other than that, I had no idea what I wanted on this painting. I had no idea how or if it would turn out. So it's making me very, very happy. I like it a lot. I hope you are enjoying it too. And if you paint it, I hope that, I hope that you're really, you know, gentle with yourself and not you know, don't try to hold yourself to some standard. Just paint it and enjoy it. You know, like I said in my vlog, and I might have said here today, I swear to you, I mean it. When I paint for myself, I never go into it with any kind of expectation. I never go into it with the idea that it has to turn out a certain way and I never get frustrated and defeated if it, if it doesn't turn out, you know, to be a good painting. Because the whole point of painting for myself is to enjoy the process and just have fun. And that's what I want for you guys too. So yeah, I'm really happy with how this is turning out. I think I wanna go in here, my flowers are dry now, and I wanna just kind of push and pull the highlights a little bit more, maybe define a few petals a little bit more, and then I think we're about done. So let's take this flower all the way to completed, and then we'll move on to the other ones. And I am sticking with my number six. So I'm gonna get quinacridone. I'm kind of not using my alizarin at this point, but you certainly can if you like. I'm gonna mix up a color that's just a very, very, very pale pink. Just dash that in. Another 
little poke of just white. Bright, bright white there. Just streak it in. I'm really not worried if there's, you know, not a lot of definition between this petal or that petal because I think that, like I said, overall the, the shape of the bud and the colors, that's what's going to tell you it's a magnolia. I don't necessarily have to have, you know, these perfectly laid out petals. That was just some quinacridone. A little matte medium. There we go. Just streaking those colors together with a bit of matte medium is all. Let's get some in there. That spot looks kind of dark. Maybe it's on the other side. I'm just going to wipe all that off and get a little poke of white. Nice and thick. See how thick my paint is? I like that. I'm almost happy with that. I washed off my filbert, a little poke of Payne's Gray, some quinacridone. Mix it up in there so I have a very dark color. Almost makes a super dark purpley color. Maybe a little matte medium. And I'm just going to take a hint of this color. Right here at the base. That's what I felt like it was missing. A little dark bit here at the bottom. See, it's not overly dark. It's just really a suggestion. Just kind of suggesting that it's a very dark, deep color. Love that. All right, on to this one. Gonna get that little pink color again, very pale. Very, very pale. And start to define just the, the tips, the edges of a couple of those petals. This one's opening up a little. Just some quinacridone. Spread that at the base here. Little matte medium or water, whatever you want to use to kind of smooth it in. Wipe that off and just some white. Nice and heavy. Just kind of streak it. Very light pressure. See, I'm still using the edge of my filbert. I'm not using it flat. I love to use filberts on the edge. You can get really nice, smooth shapes with them. They're a little easier to control than like a round brush, but you can still press a little bit harder and get a wider line. See how I widened that out. And maybe just a little right there. Just picked up a little matte medium and smoothed that 
quinacridone over top right there. I just felt like there was too much of a disconnect. Good. Now I'm going to get my Payne's Gray quinacridone mixture. And kind of scratch that in at the base. Sometimes darkening red of any color can be challenging, you know, to darken it, but to also keep it a true red and keep it vibrant. And that's why I like the Payne's Gray for it. If you use black, I mean, you can kind of get a little bit of a purpley color, but it also gets dull. I feel like the, I'm going to take just a little hint of it up there. I like that a lot. In fact, I hope you can see that because I'm just going for it up here. I'm not moving my camera. I'm just going to do a little bit of that right up in here too. Just the edge and kind of scoot a darker line up there. But the Payne's Gray, it gets you that little bit of a purple tone to it, but it help, helps keep it vibrant. So quinacridone stays nice and vibrant even when it's darkened. Where if I mixed it with uh, Mars Black, it would dull down. So just another reason I think Payne's Gray is essential. If you don't have it, do whatever you can to get it. Because, yeah, you can mix it, but for certain things, it's it's just really difficult to use and like to mix it and then use it like that. And it's just easier to have it in a tube. If you have an old tube of paint, you can definitely mix it and then keep it in a tube. I've done that before. We are getting down to the end of it, I think. I'm going to mix up a good amount here because this flower is substantially bigger than the others. Just to find the edge of that petal. I'm just going to dunk into my quinacridone. Lay it down at the bottom here and smooth it up. A little matte medium. That one kind of got aggressive, but that's okay because I haven't added the white yet. Be confident in your brush strokes. You know, the more I paint, the, the more, the more I start to notice that when I just confidently do a brush stroke, even if I don't feel confident, if I just kind of act like I'm confident, you know, then my brush stroke looks more confident. It actually looks like, looks like I felt confident in doing it. And so that's nice. You know, the, the more you tighten up, the more unconfident, I think. Is that a word? Unconfident? Inconfident? How would you say that? The less confident <laughs> it's going to appear. Like, we've talked about this before, how, you know, you can be going along painting something and it, it, nothing is turning out right, and you're like, fine, just, you know, and just kind of slash paint everywhere. And a lot of times when that happens, you stop and you look at it and you're like, oh, 
actually, that kind of looks good. And it's because, you know, you're having that kind of confident, I don't care attitude that I was talking about. All right, wipe that off and dunk into my white. Nice, bright, heavy, thick brush strokes there. A little matte medium, kind of smooth out just a bit of that texture. I do like a little bit of the texture. Let's give that a little bit of a point. There we go. I like that. Clean brush, Payne's Gray, Quinacridone, Mount Medium. And a little bit of a deeper color right there. And see how adding that deeper color right there against that white petal, that helps set it apart, helps set the two petals apart. On that medium. And I am super in love with my Magnolia painting, and I think I'm done, so I'm gonna sign up. And there is your spring Magnolia painting. I hope that painting this one was as enjoyable for you as it was for me. It was really nice starting with just a vague idea and seeing it through to the end, giving myself permission to just relax into the painting and not worry about whether or not it turned out. Thank you so much to my sponsor, Fredericks, for providing the awesome canvas that I used in today's painting. There is an affiliate link in the video description below to where you can get yours as well. And as always, thank you to all of you for painting with me each week, and I hope to see you next time.